This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Well, good morning. Well, this is not a stretch since we're entrepreneurs and investors, but I'm going to guess this is a really competitive group that likes to win. But I'm going to ask you all, I think several of us have probably also been in situations where we spent a lot of time, we did all the right things, and at the end of the day, we lost the deal. And maybe you didn't even know why. Well, this happens way too often in complex B2B sales. In a complex, a peak performing sales team in a complex sale will only close 33% of their opportunities. But what's even more disturbing is they'll spend 65% more time on a loss than they do on a win. I'm Tony Berry, I'm CEO and co-founder of Interloop, and I've been in the complex B2B space for over 25 years. And what may be surprising is the complexity doesn't come from a company's product or their service. It comes from the fact that on average today, 5.4 people are involved in making a, a sign off on a B2B purchase decision. And anytime you get a group of people together, as we probably all know, you get different personalities. And what comes with different personalities is often conflicting opinions. So the complexity and challenge is how do you drive that group to reach consensus to purchase your product? Well, Interloop is a sales execution platform that's powered by IBM Watson that uses machine learning to solve this puzzle. Think of Interloop as a digital sales coach that's monitoring all those emails and calls and interactions that occur with this buying group. And what it helps you do as a sales team is it helps you tailor your content to these unique personalities. It also suggests actions on how to drive consensus. And from that, you can actually uh, make a decision on how to move forward with the team. Most importantly, though, it will alert you if you've got the dysfunctional buying group and you need to walk away. It's often said there are two winners in every sales opportunity, the one that wins the deal and the one that walks away first. Interloop is, is in the fastest growing subsegment of the $30 billion CRM market. We've got version one of our platform out in the wild and we're getting feedback from our initial paying customers that's very positive. We're now looking for a $400,000 seed investment as a standard convertible note that we will use to build our platform and our team. Good presentation, but it was a little unclear to me. Uh, and w you spent a lot of time trying to describe the problem. I I'm still uh, uncertain as to what the problem truly is. Okay. Um, I think you did a good job on describing certain things. Uh, the fact that 30% of these companies or, or these opportunities don't close. The fact that it's a complex problem. I don't even know what a complex enterprise sale is exactly. So B two B sale. I assume it's an enterprise mm -hmm. sale. I think it would have been more effective if you had thrown in some numbers, if you have any, in terms of your results, the data that you have. Great feedback, yeah. Because the, the, the uh, uh, two minute pitch like this, you need to be able to stand out from, you know, from, from the crowd. And, and I need to grab onto something. Great, great feedback. And, and what, I, what I see is, interesting but i don't think you said enough to be able to tell me you know what i really need to take him out for a cup of coffee uh and even if i buy yes even if you're <laughs> buying uh, because it's free right now so uh you know what 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 I, what it would be what would be useful is do you have any data mm -hmm. the the test you threw uh ibm watson and, and I don't really know what that means. Okay. I mean, I know what it means, but I don't know how it helps you. And um, $30 billion CRM market, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that you should be able to synthesize what you, what you did, not try to say everything that you did, and just focus on the, on the essence of the problem. Great, no, that's great uh, feedback. Do you want us to answer some of those now? I or? do, please. Okay, great. I'm also gonna have Jordan, who's our CTO, and, by the way, you can probably tell he's not my brother. I wish, I wish I was that young, right? So, <laughs> no, I actually want to, that's great because I've actually been waiting for somebody to say we're brothers. No, but what we actually do, the difficulty of a complex sale is actually navigating people and their unique personalities. And I can let Jordan kind of explain the Watson piece of that, and then I'll give you some, some details on the market if that would help. So. Yeah, Tony highlighted the sales effectiveness piece, which is all about personalities. And so we're, yeah. we're uh, traditionally you can't use software to pick up people. It's a very difficult task, but with IBM Watson and some of these cognitive technologies, we can start to do things like parsing email and pulling out their personalities, so core personality traits, how open are you, how aggressive are you, how conscientious are you, and then we can help sales reps tailor their messaging, mirror the people they're selling to, so they can have the most effective conversation. Okay, it, that's, that's more, more useful. 
a lot more useful. I Actually, still don't understand how effective it is. So the, the interesting thing is that one of the stats is if you can do in the moment sales coaching, which is always the challenge, because as a sales manager, you can't be on all calls. So with, with our tool, what you can do is you can give those in the moment feedback. And when you do that, a sales rep is actually four times as performant in that opportunity as they are if they don't get that situational coaching. It's a lot like sports. If you get immediate feedback, you can adapt to it. What are, is that a metric that you've been able to measure? Yeah, it's actually a fact out of several studies that have been done on sales effectiveness. And so that's just this idea of in the moment coaching and the benefit of that. And this actually gives you that capability. Also, we're able to pick up those traits. So the thing you have to do is based upon the type of personality. As an example, if you've got an analytic, you've got to start with facts and figures and then you share the vision of your solution. If you've got a visionary, you've got to do the opposite. If you've got them both in the room together, there's some nuances to it. So what we can do with Watson is pick up those traits and start to suggest what's called the sequencing of how you move through the So Watson helps you determine the personalities of the people you're selling to? That's one of the things it actually does. So, how does it do that? Is it, uh... So here's the interesting part. So you can take um, emails, and we all use different verbs and tenses as we talk. And by running the emails through what's called personality insights, Jordan can explain the types of things that we actually get out of that. Oh, but, I see. Yep. I see. Mm -hmm. Email is, it, is what you're looking at. Okay. Yeah, and that's for the sales effectiveness piece. Uh, complex selling is complex by nature, and so there's several areas we focus on: sales efficiency, sales effectiveness, continuous improvement. It's kind of our full platform. I, I get it. It took me a while it's to hard, get yeah. that. And this is the the key of a two-minute pitch, uh, and there, I think it's the most important pitch, because you don't have an effective ten-minute pitch or an hour pitch if you don't convince somebody to listen to you for two minutes. But if you tell me, tell me if this is uh, wrong. You, you basically are feeding Watson information that you collect from the person you're selling to, like emails, mm -hmm. other things like social yeah. feed, uh, calls, yeah. interactions, and notes, then things like Watson that. Watson spits out personality traits about the person. Mm -hmm. So you have a psychologist basically telling you, yeah. without really hiring a psychologist or doing a mm -hmm. psycho, psychoanalysis on the person, what kind of personality it is that you're dealing with. I've, Go ahead. Yeah, a lot of times in sales, it's kind of a, a black art. You know, it's I've been in the, the industry for 25 years. I just have a gut feeling about somebody. This is now an objective way to break down someone's personality and their behavior, such that you can apply a scientific approach to your selling versus just a uh, intuition. Have you tested this yourselves? In, in yeah, so so the research that was actually the first test was on us, um, clearly, and, and friends and family. Yeah. And now we've got active clients that are starting to use it, and we're getting very positive feedback. I, the only the last thing I'll say before I let you say something here is that sorry, okay. but uh, is that I, I think it's going to be hard to raise 400k or any money without some test because mm -hmm. you basically have an interesting idea uh, and you have some research that that says this is what's going to happen. You know, I, I don't know what investor is going to say that's this is really interesting, but show me some data, mm -hmm. especially because you're an analytics company. So. Cool. Great yeah. feedback. Yeah, I think for the investor, one of the things you have to do is overcome the feels very academic, right? Yeah. And so, okay, does the, you know, academically great, does the real world support mm -hmm. it? Um, something that I think you should be aware of. So I'm not intimately familiar with your space, right? But a little bit. And I think investor perception is that sales product, I'll call it a sales productivity tool, mm -hmm. that that's a heavily populated space, mm -hmm. right? That there are a lot of companies doing this. I know there was somebody who presented one to us, and so I sent it over to Chris Halligan, right? Mm -hmm. Who's somebody that a lot of people here know, active angel investor, and he's, he's a very experienced, successful sales manager. I said, Chris, what, you, you know, you, tell me what you think of this, because if you tell me that there's something special here, I'll look at it, but if you tell me it's not, then I won't, right? And his response was, I have I, I receive probably three per week, you know, companies like this, you know, wanting to sell me their Salesforce add-on, right? That does this, that, the other thing. So um, differentiation mm -hmm. is going to be really important for you to overcome. I think to overcome from the investor the, isn't this a really really crowded space, right? In terms of, you know. People who now fundamentally would this be is this a CRM add-on or is this a, a standalone product? It's a companion. Product? It does not require a CRM tool, but it will work with it as a data source. And what's okay. interesting on the market, this has been the, without getting too tight, in the sales enablement side of CRM. So it's part of that thirty billion dollar market. It's growing at over hundred percent year over year. 
and there have been some very positive both investments and exits recently. Um, there's sales loft down in Atlanta that just got 12 million doing this for inside sales instead of strategic. Um, there's another company called SalesWise that just got mm -hmm. a, a big investment. A company in the West Coast called Clary um, that's doing the same thing. It is this whole idea of now doing things in a different way that you just couldn't do technically um, a few and, years and ago. And I agree. I think it's yeah. interesting. I, and, and I think you have probably enough differentiation, but I think you, you need the traction. Mm -hmm. You need the proof that, that this works in the measurement. It's great feedback, yeah. That, that talks yeah. about how much, I'm, and I would, I would just go out and, before you go too far into the fundraising process, test it in mm -hmm. real customers. Uh, if you can, I don't know if this is expensive to, to actually try, but I would offer it. No, actually, we've got people that are paying us for it now, so the benefit's there. Most, most sales executives that have this challenge understand the ROI on it. Um, so it drops through quite quickly to the bottom line. How, so how, how much are you selling this for? So we're, right now we have two, we have a pro product and a premium. The premium is around $125, pre a SaaS model. Then we have expert services that sit on top of it. $125? $125 per month per user, correct. Okay, how many customers do you have? We have um, three that went through our beta. We have one that's on our production. The two betas have agreed to move forward to production. And we've got five or six more in our pipeline right now. So it's, a, it's about 50 users all and how long have they been using it? So they deployed in January is when our platform, uh, you, our production platform went live. Do you have any metrics yet that you can show in yeah, terms we're getting, of before and after? We're getting qualitative as you would expect now, and now we're working on the quantitative with our initial customer right now. And actually IBM's helping us with that. I, I would suggest in your two minute pitch, talk about the fact you have users, mm -hmm. right? To know that you have a product out there and yep. you have users, that's a big differentiation. Yeah, I think your, your pitch should change. I think you need to focus on the uniqueness of what you do, which is you're just basically getting data, you're feeding data to Watson, or if that's not important, to a system that's going to give you personality traits. I think that is very interesting. Eventually, it's not going to be unique, but for now it is, mm -hmm. probably. And then talk about your traction, and that's all I would do. Great. Um, I would focus on that because Great. I think that the traction is probably going to get most the most interesting. People want to understand that better. Okay, makes perfect sense. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's good. All right, let's go to the audience. Who's got? Uh, I just have one suggestion for you. We have several products ourselves that monitor user data and metrics, and every time we bring those up, we tend to get a really bad response. Uh, it's kind of scary with that big brother hmm. idea. So watering down the fact that you're monitoring Interesting. Can I ask who, who is the bad response from? From the users or? I, from pretty much everybody. Yeah. From okay. users and the, the investors like the big data side of it because they see so much more potential. But from the users and the end users, that's where we started getting a lot of the uh, you know backlash. It doesn't matter that everybody's doing it, i.e. Mm -hmm. Gmail and everybody else. They just don't want to hear about it. But other than that, like the product, Great feedback. it seems like it Yes. So how much content do you have to feed for Watson to get something useful? And then how do you capture phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, and body language? So there's two sides to kind of the data collection. I'll answer the first one. With Watson, you need about in, anywhere from 500 to 3,000 words. Uh, so it's about seven to eight, up to you know 30 emails, depending on how terse your emails are. Um, and so that helps us parse the personality piece. And then we also check on interaction data. So if I send you a piece of content, did you open it? Did you share it with somebody? Uh, if I send you emails, did you open them? Did you click through? Uh, which links did you click on? You know, things like that. So it's, it's both behavioral and personality, and then we, we serve that up to sales reps so they have some sort of uh, inside playbook on how to go about uh, selling them. Does that help answer? Yeah, that part. How do you capture phone calls with face-to-face -face meetings and body language? So, Phone calls, uh, there are a lot of really good speech to text uh, tools out there. We're leveraging Watson, our partner, has a very good one that's been tested. So uh, obviously certain industries, you have to be able to record and not record phone calls, but we can take your verbiage, parse it in text, send it through our system. Um, and then some of this is qualitative data. So the reps are saying, hey, I had a good meeting, bad meeting. Uh, we talked about this concept or this concept, and we use that all within our tool. Other questions? Yes, yeah, right here. What barriers do you have to protect your space? So like intellectual barriers or just barriers in general? So yeah, from an intellectual standpoint, obviously we're using the Watson engine, but we're putting our tech on top of it. So it's a combination of experience 
and then some modern technology that we put together on top of that, plus the Watson piece. So it is certainly something, and, and you said it well, there will be others that will be in this space. Um, the market is certainly something that you're probably seeing a lot about in the press. It does take that combination of three, though. So it is really having all three of those together in the team to actually execute on it. Does that answer that for you? But, and then we've got some algorithms that could be packed. Have you tested your price point? If you're truly adding that much ROI, even at a seat cost of you know, $100, $200, that seems a little low for the kind of return these companies should be seeing. It's one of the things we're, we're priced a little lower than we think we'll end up to get exactly what we were suggesting, would get some of that qualitative ROI. So this is kind of those early um, users and visionaries. We certainly think that, that this ad can adopt to a couple different price models. One could even be a share of results down the road. Um, so really get some additional components and get the price point up. So we, we absolutely want to raise our pricing down the road. I, I just, I guess, more about the company. Are you guys doing your own development? Or is that offshore or off outsourced? And how do you protect against, you know, those who are doing it themselves? Great question. Yeah, so most people think we're a sales tool. We're both sales guys. I think we're both pretty personable. But uh, we're both engineers by trade. So we are developing, developing it. Um, and we're part of the Watson startup ecosystem, so we've been brought into their internal circle around Watson, so we're working directly with their developers to apply that technology to the problem. One more. Anybody got another question? Yes. <coughs> so you mentioned real-time equation. Can you, I mean, what, what is that one called? And, and Watson, what's your understanding? My ear? Sorry, what was the second part? Will it talk in your ear? Yeah, is it talking in my ear while I'm on the phone, or, or is it actually wording my emails? Yes, that's part of our vision is that it's, it's more of a humanistic way to interact with the software tool. So things like chatting or text, <coughs> even potentially voice, is I want to interact with the system and help it coach me rather than just input output data. All right, thank great. You. Oh, great. Thank All you, right. guys. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you